so I decided to make a very short video about how to adjust microscopic images to the same um, intensi intensity or um, brightness scale, Be just because this is an issue that I um, struggled with this weekend that I found annoying and where I didn't find any very good resource. Um, the reason why I want to do this is so I acquired images, making sure I use the same um, microscopic settings, so the same exposure time, the same um, light intensity for those images. And now if I want to put them in a figure, I want them to be directly comparable. So the cells that have more of the fluorescent protein actually should show up brighter than the ones that have less. What, I, what I'm having here is files for a cell line, a yeast cell line that doesn't have any fluorescent protein and another one that expresses the yellow fluorescent protein. So we should be able to see clear differences there. So let's go ahead and load those ones into image chain. We'll just load them at the default settings. And then put the one over here. Um, then we have to go into uh, the appropriate channel for the YFP. And what you see here is um, that's maybe not that easy to see because the background is different, but those cells actually appear at a pretty similar intensity. And what's appearing different is the background. If we look up here, um, when I mouse over the image, you see that the background value here is around 200 or so. And if we go over here, the background is actually also around 200. So um, values that are the same are displayed differently. Um, if we go here towards some of the brightest spots in the cells, we are somewhere around 400 and the less bright spots, maybe 300. And here, if we go over the cells, then we're maybe around values of 200. Um, I should say these are 16-bit images. So if your image format is different than 16-bit, then this video is probably not going to help you too much. Um, you see that they are 16-bit image. So you see it up here. If you make this window a slight bit larger, then you see, okay, it's a 16-bit image. So the situation um, that we're having, uh, and for this, we can look here into the adjust brightness contrast. And if we go into the settings, then we see that here it's currently using this automatic um, so what this means um, is our images are actually okay. um, so if this one is our um, x-axis range that represents the 16-bit range so 16-bit range would be from 0 to something like um, 65k I think it's um, 65 535 um, and then our cells actually at their low intensities in the low hundreds, um, you know, they would be somewhere out here. So if this is our untaxed turn, I'm even exaggerating. So they would be actually even closer to the zero. Um, and the strain that's tagged would be maybe looking something like this, so similar background and then maybe a bit for the cells. So again, in these images that I'm showing, there are not so many cells. So it would actually be more like a little tail here. Uh, but just for the sake of illustration. And I apologize for the um, sloppy graphics, but this is really just um, supposed to be a quick and dirty video. So if we're now in this automatic range, what ImageJ will do, it will select um, for each image the minimum and the maximum value, and then it will set its range to this minimum and maximum value. So here it will say for our untagged strain, um, we are somewhere in a range from 140, to um, here it was about 200. So it would go and say, okay, now our range is from 140 to 200, and we're just spreading out um, over here. And then for the tagged strain, the range would be minimum value again, somewhere around 140 because the background is similar, but then the maximum value is, um, so I looked it up before, maximum is somewhere around 440. So what we would have now is um, something like this. And therefore you can see, um, so this then represents the mapping from um, the actual in intensity to the displayed intensity. So you could draw something like uh, a straight line mapping, which means if we're here at our um, average background intensity um, in the untaxed strain, this would be mapped to a relatively high value. And here, if we draw uh, the same line and we take our average background intensity, this will be mapped to a lower value, uh, which is why the background is appearing differently. 
um, and why um, why we're not seeing this difference in the actual cell intensity that we want. So what we would want to do instead, instead of um, every image going to its minimum and its maximum, we would like to have the same minimum and maximum um, for all of the images that we're using. So we would like to have this value of um, around 440, not just applied to this image, but to both of the images. Um, the way how you can do this is if we go, um, if we highlight here, go set, and now we go here, 40 to 440. Um, and now what I would recommend here is um, don't use this automatic. So you, you can get away um, leaving automatic here, but then as soon as you hit apply um, in this dialog over here, then you're going to mess things up. So I wouldn't recommend this. I would go for a 16-bit scale here because our images are 16-bit. Um, I could also directly propagate this to both, both images, but let's apply it to this image for now. What you see actually now is that everything becomes black. And my best guess is actually that this is a bug in image J, because if we go back here now, you see that it's set to the 16-bit range, but not to the values that I told it. So I guess it's just getting so excited about setting to the 16-bit range that it forgot about the values that I told it. Um, so let's just go back here and put those values back in. Um, Okay, and now we see, okay, it has set to this image. Not much has, much has changed because anyway, these values were very close to the minimum and maximum that we had before. Um, let's do the same thing here. And in this case, we should observe quite a bit of a change. So here the maximum was 300 before. Um, so I guess there are some bright spot, spots, but only a few which went ahead, uh, which went above the about 200 of um, cellular background intensity here. So 140, 440 also here. Um, 16 bit range. Okay, and now we see um, that we have what we want. So the backgrounds here, which stay still about 200, so the actual values didn't change. Um, so the backgrounds now are comparable, but the cells here are much dimmer because they only have a bit of flat background intensity. And again, if we mouse over them, we see the actual values themselves haven't changed. So um, what has occurred now is exactly, um, exactly like setting uh, to the same maxima that we wanted. However, image J still remembers that it's on the 16-bit range, so we're still on the scale from 0 to 65k, only that it set its maximum and minim minimum value. What this means is like any pixel intensity that would be below 140 just shows up as black, and anything that would be above 440 um, would just be displaced at the, right, at the highest intensity. And then in between, we have this linear mapping from the actual intensities to the displayed intensities. Okay, at this point, um, essentially, this is already the solution that you want. Um, the only things to keep in mind, as I said, the actual pixel intensities haven't changed. So let's close down those images and let's just open them up again. Again, we can just go to the further defaults are previously used settings here. Um, we are going again in our um, YFP channel. And what you actually see here now is the YFP channel is black. Um, the reason for this is image J remembered that we wanted to be on the 16-bit scale, but it didn't remember our display values. So if we, or what we have to do is now we have to go back to our display values. In this case, let's just apply it to both images at once. Okay, and we're back at the um, result that we wanted. And you can now go and export these images and put them in your in your figure. Um, one more thing that um, to keep in mind is um, what happens now if we press the apply button here. So I want to remind you, background intensity was about um, 200. The cell cells here about 300 and the very bright spots here. Um, go up to this 440. And here we have background also around 200 and the cells, you know, a slight bit above. So maybe you know, up to 250 or something like that. So if we go apply, we have this image highlighted. Um, it will also tell us now that the actual pixel values change, which they didn't before. So before only the um, visualization, only what they look like changed, but not actually um, the values recorded for a pixel. 
So let's go OK. Nothing changes in the display. But now if we mouse over it, we see that we have for the background a value of about 10,000 or so. And for the cells, it goes up to 50, 60,000. Do the same here, hit apply, same warning. And then you see, um, OK, here we are around 10,000 or so. And for the cells, we will be a bit higher, maybe yeah, 15,000 or so. So what hap has happened here now is um, we had transferred our um, images. So we, we remained on this um, 65K scale. But then we said we zoomed in here. So we had zoomed. In this case, it's not a change of the scale, but only a change of our zoom window. So here we had been 140 and 440. And then it was something like this. And here we were, I'm sorry. We were again also 140, 440. And here we would then be something like this, more or less. Um, what happened now if we hit our apply button? Um, it said, let's take those values that are currently the minimum and the maximum, and let's um, change them to a new 16-bit range. So this value here would now be, have become the zero value, and this one here would have become the new 65K value, same one here. By um, keeping the images this way, if we save them um, in this way with the new changed um, pixel values, this obviously would circumvent this problem of when we open it up that it just appears black. But of course, um, you have to be aware. So you changed your values now. And if you didn't do it correctly, what you did so far, so if for some reason I would not have chosen the same minimum and maximum for both of the images, then we would have a problem now because then um, the same intensities represent um, different underlying data, which is obviously not good. So I don't think it's good practice to overwrite your, your original images. Um, you will see that if I, if I just were to close this image, it will ask me, do I want to save the changes? Because again, now there are actually changes to the pixel values and not just to the way it's displayed. So in this case, um, I would not recommend saving this. Um, same here. Don't save. Um, well, maybe maybe I should have gone for cancel instead. Um, what you could do instead is um, save a copy, um, where you, but only if you're sure that the changes that you have applied uh, are correct. And so, yeah, essentially, this is the background about this um, setting the brightness.